Welcome back for another video on the best YouTube channel ever. Today's video will be about a series of incidents involving murders, attempted murders, and assaults between California gang members throughout the state and California police officers throughout the state. I did a similar video, but that was only Los Angeles County. That video will be pinned in the comments. If an incident is not in the video, it's most likely in the LA County video or separate videos. I encourage you to go through different playlists throughout the channel. You might find what's not in today's video. On October 22, 1994, Manuel Perez, known as White Dude because of his light skin, who was from the White Fence Gang, was barricaded and cornered in a Sunset Boulevard motel. Prior to the barricade, LEPD officer Charles Heim was on temporary assignment in the Hollywood Division. Officer Heim was shot and killed by Manuel. A massive manhunt was underway. LAPD shared Manuel's mugshot with all divisions. Perez was in a first floor room of the Lucky Seven. Police staked out the motel. A woman whom police declined to identify was in the room with Perez and surrendered to officers without incident. Around 10.45 a.m., Perez opened the door and fired at least two shots at six uniformed officers standing in the parking lot but hit none of them. An officer fired a single shotgun round and Perez retreated into the ground floor room. Over the next two hours, Perez became increasingly agitated, reportedly telling police negotiators that he would kill more officers in office self rather than surrender. It was then Manuel Perez was fatally shot by one of Himes LEPD Metro Division colleagues as Manuel brandished a handgun in the doorway of a room at the Lucky 7 Motor Inn. On January 7, 2006, East Palo Alto officer Richard May was shot and killed when he responded to a disturbance call at the corner of University Avenue and Week Street at approximately 4.30 p.m. When he arrived, he observed several men fighting. As he approached the group, one of the men fled. As Officer May attempted to stop the man, the subject turned around and opened fire with a semi-automatic handgun. Despite being mortally wounded, Officer May was able to return fire and wounded the man in the leg. The accused shooter was identified as Alberto Alvarez. Alberto is from a Sacramento street gang called Taliban. In November 2009, Alberto Alvarez was convicted of the murder of Officer Richard May. In February 2010, Alberto Alvarez showed no emotion, no remorse during sentencing. Alberto Alvarez was sentenced to death row at San Quentin State Prison. On June 15, 2008, Yolo County Sheriff Deputy Antonio Diaz was shot and killed while making a traffic stop near the intersection of County Road 6 and County Road 99 West at approximately 9.30 p.m. After a five-minute high-speed pursuit, Norteño gang member Marco Topi exited his vehicle and opened fire on Deputy Diaz, penetrating his vest, striking him in the shoulder. Despite his wound, Deputy Diaz was able to call for assistance. He was transported to a local hospital where he died from his injuries. On October 4, 2011, Norteño Marco Topi was convicted of killing Deputy Antonio Diaz. In February 2012, Norteño Marco Topi is sentenced to death row at San Quentin State Prison. On February 28, 2015, around 2 a.m., a pair of Norteños from Merced County named Jaime Cadillo and Steven Ricon were getting pulled over by Merced Police Officer Brian Rinder. Rinder spotted a Burgundy Chrysler 200. Rinder began following the car to look for possible signs that the driver was driving under the influence. As he was following the Chrysler northbound on G Street, Rinder saw it make a left turn without yielding to oncoming traffic. Rinder turned on his red and blue traffic enforcement lights to get the vehicle to stop. At first, the driver did not stop and Rinder called dispatch through his radio to say the car was not pulling over. The driver drove an entire block, then made a right turn before he eventually pulled over in the middle of the block on 8th Street. After the Chrysler pulled over, Officer Render approached the driver's side of the vehicle. The car was still running. Render asked the driver, later identified as Racon, for his driver's license. 
Render explained he had pulled Raccoon over because of the traffic violation and to evaluate if Raccoon had any signs of impairment. Raccoon gave Render his driver's license. Render noticed that Raccoon had two lines with four dots on top of it tattooed directly underneath his left eye, which Render immediately recognized as a gang tattoo. Raccoon also looked Render in the eyes as he was speaking with them. Cadillo was sitting in the front passenger seat. Render noticed he seemed very tense and just stared straight ahead. Render thought this was unusual. While Render was talking with Raccoon, a second police officer, Officer Ryan Rasmussen, arrived on the scene in a different car. As Rasmussen approached on the passenger side of the Chrysler, Render gestured for Rasmussen to watch Cadillo. About 15 seconds after Rasmussen arrived, a third officer, Officer Joseph Opinski, also arrived at the scene. Officer Rasmussen asked Cadillo several times to roll down the front passenger window, but Cadillo did not do so. Rasmussen then told Render to order Cadillo to roll it down. Eventually, Cadillo reached over with his left hand, which was shaking really bad, and rolled down the window. Cadillo's right hand was not visible to the officers because it was covered with a hat or a sweatshirt. Rasmussen had asked Cadillo for his identification twice, but Cadillo just kept looking forward and ignored him. Officer Rasmussen then gave a command for Cadillo to show his hands. Cadillo did not do anything and kept looking out the front window. Rasmussen again told Cadillo to show his hands. Cadillo ignored him and kept staring straight ahead. At that point, Rasmussen realized something's not right here. Rasmussen removed his gun and put it down by his side. Then he took half a step back, pointed his gun at Cadillo, and said, Show me your fucking hands. While Rasmussen was ordering Cadillo to show his hands, Officer Render ordered Raccoon to turn off the car, but he did not do so. Within a split second, Cadillo raised his right hand. Rasmussen saw two or three muzzle flashes come from the passenger side window and heard a gunshot. Bullets struck Rasmussen in his abdomen, and another bullet nicked the middle finger of his right hand and went down through the ring finger and pinky finger. Rasmussen's bulletproof vest stopped the bullets to the abdomen, but his ring finger was completely shattered and his pinky finger had a lot of broken bones in it. Officers returned a volley of gunfire and Officer Opinski radioed that an officer was down. Cadillo's vehicle took off and almost instantly, Officer Render heard a noise that made him think the car was shifted into gear before it sped off. Opinski jumped in his patrol car and attempted to follow Cadillo and Ragon but quickly lost sight of their vehicle. Cadillo and Raccoon were later located following a search. Raccoon was found hiding in a bathroom closet and officers had to use force to remove and arrest him. On May 22, 2019, firearm evidence and phone text messages convicted Merced Norteños, Jaime Cadillo, and Steven Raccoon of assault with a firearm on a peace officer and possession of a firearm by a felon. On August 19, 2019, both Jaime Cadillo and Steven Racon were sentenced to 50 years to life in prison. Both Jaime Cadillo and Steven Racon laughed after being sentenced to prison for a very long time.